January 2024, I took a road trip to Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. During my visit, I encountered a wide array of fascinating symbolism. Researcher and author David Ovison, in his book titled The Secret Architecture of Our Nation's Capital, advises that there are 23 complete zodiacs and over 1,000 zodiacal and planetary symbols in Washington, D.C. In this video, I explored the Capitol building and the symbolism housed within it. I explored the musings of several authors and researchers on the subject of symbols in D.C. and their connection to astrology, Freemasonic orders, and even explored the subject of political power. The United States Capitol, often called the Capitol Building, is the seat of the United States Congress, the legislative branch of the federal government. It is located on Capitol Hill on the eastern end of the National Mall in Washington, D.C. The term Capitol, from Latin Capitolium, originally denoted the Capitoline Hill in Rome and the Temple of Jupiter that stood on its summit. The Capitol building was designed by the winner of a competition to pick the architect, a physician, speculative Freemason, an amateur architect by the name of William Thornton was the winner. The construction had to be supervised by trained architects. In 1803, Freemason Benjamin Latrobe teamed up with Freemason Thomas Jefferson and construction got off to a proper footing. However, during the War of 1812, much of the capital was burned by British troops. Latrobe took on the reconstruction. Freemason Charles Bullfinch completed the task in 1826. The current dome of the Capitol was added by another Freemason, Thomas U. Walter, who at the time was the architect of the Capitol when Congress authorized the expansion of the Capitol in 1855. To the Freemasons, designing ceremonial cornerstone and foundation rituals revolved around examining the ceremonial in the light of astrology. This can be traced to ancient Rome. The writer Plutarch, who did more than most ancient writers to reveal the mysteries of the ancient schools of initiation, recorded that Romulus, before laying the foundation of Rome, sent for men from Etruria to find out how the ceremony of founding should be conducted. On Wednesday, September 18, 1793, Freemason and President George Washington laid the northernmost foundation stone for the new Capitol building, which was to be the spiritual center of Washington, D.C. The horoscope chart for the ceremonial of the Capitol building symbolizes the connection between Washington, D.C. and the zodiac sign of Virgo. The Sun and Mercury were in Virgo, as was the Dragon's Head. The ceremony was also partly designed to identify the Masonic movement with the New Republic. And toward this end, the date of the foundation was noted according to two different systems. It was the 13th year of American independence and the year 5793 according to the Masonic calendar.
The Statue of Freedom, also known as Columbia, created by Freemason Thomas Crawford, is on top of the dome of the Capitol building. Columbia is a poetic name for the United States, slightly based on the name of Christopher Columbus, and derives from the word Columba, which means dove. Columba is a dove-shaped constellation located in the southern sky. She then morphed into a goddess-like figure called Columbia, which was the spirit of the country. Per the United States Constitution, the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., is not a state within the United States. It is a federal district. It also has its own flag. Below Columbia is the Latin inscription of E Pluribus Unum, meaning out of many, one. Around the head of the statue of Columbia are five pointed stars. The five pointed star or a pentagram originates from the Egyptian hieroglyph representing star as it had five points. It has been used as a religious symbol throughout the world from the beginning of recorded history. The five pointed star is a symbol of the female and the mother Venus. According to Pythagoras, the five points of the star each represent one of the five elements that make up man. Fire, water, air, earth, and quintessence. Five elements symbolism can be seen in other architecture around DC. Occultists have long associated the pentagram with several beliefs including humanity or the human body, representing two outstretched arms, two legs, the head, and the five physical senses, sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste. Directly across the street from the Columbia statue and the Capitol building is the Library of Congress which houses a ceiling fresco of the five senses and five petals on a statue of Minerva. This symbolism can be seen in the Capitol Area Part 2 video, which will cover the Library of Congress. The five-pointed star, or the pentagram, is a symbol for the star Sirius, known as the Dog Star or Dragon Star. Author and researcher David Ovison, in his book titled the Secret Architecture of Our Nation's Capital advises the following about the five-pointed star. Below E Pluribus Unum on the Statue of Columbia are fasci. It was a symbol used widely in the Roman Empire, and it consists of rods bound together around an axe. The axe is the origin of the term Axis Powers for the fascist countries in the Second World War. The symbolism is of people and countries bound together under a common centralized dictatorship, the Axe. Strangely, this symbol is dotted all around DC, inside Congress, at the Lincoln Memorial, and it is also on the back of the Mercury Dime. On the Capitol's east entrance, central pediment, there is a central figure which represents America who rests her right arm on a shield inscribed USA. The shield is supported by an altar bearing the inscription July 4th, 1776. America points to Justice, who lifts scales in her left hand and in her right hand holds a scroll inscribed Constitution, 17th of September, 1787. To America's left are an eagle and the figure of Hope, who rests her arm on an anchor. Luigi Persico created the original sandstone figures from 1825 to 1828. 
when the U.S. Capitol's East Central Front was extended in 1958 to 1962. The badly deteriorated figures were removed and restored, and plaster models were made of them. From these models, the reproductions seen today on the central pediment were carved in Georgia white marble by Bruno Mankowski. Located on the House of Representatives Portico East Front pediment is the Apotheosis of Democracy. Created by American sculptor Paul Whelan Bartlett in 1916, the pediment's center focal point is the figure of allegorical peace, which is dressed in armor and is depicted protecting genius. Leaning against the right leg of peace is genius. Genius holds a torch that symbolizes immortality in his right hand. Peace stands in front of an olive tree. To the right of peace is industry. To the left of peace is agriculture. Now we will take some time to take a look at the ideology of democracy. Democracy is often defined and portrayed as a system of government in which laws, policies, leadership, and major undertakings of a state or other polity are directly or indirectly decided by the people. However, if one looks deeper into the etymology, meaning, and history of democracy, one will find a different meaning can be concluded. Democracy comes from the Greek word demos, meaning mob, and the Greek word ocracy, meaning rule. Demosocracy, or democracy, means mob rule. Now, when we put it into more Americanized political terms, it is the rule of the people. And while that may sound good in print, the founders of democracy in our modern-day form realized that the people could be manipulated to whatever they would want the people to accept. Let's take a brief look at democracy and its link to a group called the Illuminati and even Freemason and First President George Washington's comments on the order of the Illuminati. Occult researcher and author Jordan Maxwell in his book Matrix of Power describes that May 1st, 1776 was when Adam Weishaupt, a professor of canon law, established a secret fraternal order in Munich, Bavaria called the Order of the Illuminati. From this time until today, May Day, which has its origins in ancient Rome, has been observed as a national holiday by socialists, communists, and by other so-called progressives. This you will find in any encyclopedia, and also on Wikipedia. The ultimate goal of the Illuminati, a goal that was reached gradually, was what Weishaupt referred to as the New World Order. The exclusive club back then, as it does today, marketed itself as the champion of the poor, while gradually gathering the strands of wealth, power, and influence into their own hands. The bait that was laid by Adam Weishaupt for control of a vast number of people worldwide, which has now become a very old and tired project. The project was called democracy, a people's democracy. Adam Weishaupt, like many others before him, understood that democracy has never worked, is not working now, and never will work. Basically because of the reason while people could be and are the central power of any government, the people do not hold the power of any government in the final analysis. And that while on the surface democracy seems to be the best of all possible worlds, democracy is a very perverted form of government because the people can be misled. This is very apparent when one looks at the state of America and the world today. In fact, Lady Queenborough, in her book, The Occult Theocracy, advised the following. The game of politics is the pursuit of power. In all democracies, there are two separate organizations playing the political game. The open and visible one, the members of which hold office as members of a government, and the invisible one, composed of individuals who control this visible organization 
and in whom is vested the real power, the essence of which is finance, controlling the publicity which makes or unmakes its tools. This financial power may be used to promote truth or fallacies, good or evil, national prosperity or national ruin, but so long as human nature is what it is, so long as jealousy, greed, personal ambition, and expediency can sway the lives of men, so long will the rule of the invisible power prevail by methods inimical to the best interests of a nation. The strength of a democracy thus lies at the mercy of an invisible leaders who, being nationally irresponsible, cannot be called to account for the consequences of the acts of the government they control. This, at the same time, constitutes the inherent weakness of any form of government, the apotheosis of which is the control of both parties in the state, right and left, radical and conservative, by the same forces. Then, only the puppets change, while the rule of the individuals controlling the machine continues unhindered. Voters who wonder why their efforts have failed, wonder in vain. As the dupes of a controlled publicity, their privilege of the vote is a farce. Even George Washington in his personal letters mentions the Illuminati and Freemasonry. George Washington himself was a Freemason. In response to a letter sent to George Washington in 1798, warning him about a Masonic movement operating in America, and this particular Masonic movement referred to as the Illuminati, George Washington responded in a letter to the person saying the following. What George Washington was saying was the mere fact that someone had charged that the Illuminati was operating in America. George Washington said, quote, On the contrary, no one is more satisfied with the fact than I am. Unquote. And then he proceeded to say that he did not believe that all Freemasons were involved in this plot, but that the founders of the Democratic Society in America had the object in mind of the Illuminati's projects. Quote, and the Democratic Society, unquote. George Washington said, quote, had the separation of the people from their government in view, it is too evident to be questioned, unquote. That may explain why today, in a democratic country like America, when the people make certain demands on the government, they experience no response. The people want this, the government doesn't respond. The people demand that, the government doesn't respond, because the whole concept of the democratic process in America was purposely contrived to divide the people from their government, so that the people could be out there working hard every day, taking care of their lives, feeding their children, and sending their politicians to Washington to look out for them. When the politicians got there, they were already members of certain fraternal orders, and all government was already taken care of so that the people had nothing to say about anything. And that's the point. That when you send politicians to Washington, D.C., they might just as well stay home, because the rhyme and reason of government has already been decided by secret societies and fraternal orders that most people don't know anything about.
Located above the entrance to the Senate wing of the United States Capitol building is the pediment of the progress of civilization designed by the sculptor and Freemason Thomas Crawford. Thomas Crawford was the sculptor that also created the statue of Columbia on top of the dome. The progress of civilization is an allegorical personification of America, where she's standing at the center of the pediment. America is clothed in classical drapery. She is wearing a Phrygian cap and a shawl that is decorated in stars. The Phrygian cap derives from the kingdom of Phrygia that was located in central Anatolia from around 1200 to 700 BC. They were Indo-Europeans that migrated from the Balkans and caused the fall of the mighty Hittite Empire. They worshipped the goddess Sibylle, who was called Mother Mountain. Her priesthood was made up of eunuchs, who willfully castrated themselves in service of the goddess and in consolidation with the castrated Attis, her consort. By the 4th century BC, the Phrygian cap was associated with Phrygian Attis. At around the same time, the cap appears in depictions of the legendary King Midas and other Phrygians in Greek vase paintings and sculpture. These images predate the earliest surviving literary references to the cap. The Phrygian cap came to be applied to several other non-Greek speaking peoples, most notable being the Trojans and other Western Anatolian peoples, who in Greek perception were synonymous with the Phrygians. Other Greek earthenware of antiquity also depict Amazons and Scythian archers with Phrygian caps. Maybe because of honoring Attis after his castration, the Phrygian cap came to resemble manhood or the phallus. Worshippers of Sibylle wearing the Phrygian caps were honoring the goddess and the phallus as fertility symbols. As it turns out, goddess figures like Columbia, America, the Virgin Mary, like Jesus Christ, were founded upon older goddesses. Following on the heels of goddesses such as Sibylle, Aphrodite, Venus, Ashtarte, Demeter, Hathor, Inanna, Ishtar, and Isis. The Phrygian cap appearing on the head of the goddess of America symbolizes the theme of an affinity for the goddess for those who created the United States. And this can be seen through the symbolism dotted around Washington, D.C. Located above the Senate entrance on the east front of the Capitol building is Justice and History. Justice and History was sculpted by Freemason Thomas Crawford in 1863. As you will recall, Thomas Crawford also created progress of civilization pediment, and the Statue of Columbia located on top of the dome. Justice holds a book entitled Justice, Law, Order in her left hand and a pair of scales in her right. History holds a scroll reading History, July 1776. They both recline against a globe. Inside the rotunda is a painting of the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence officially came into being on August 2, 1776, 11 years before the signing of the U.S. Constitution on September 17, 1787. In June of 1775, a group calling themselves the Continental Congress met in Philadelphia at Carpenter's Hall 
in order to establish a committee to draft the Declaration. Most of the men in Congress were high-degree Freemasons. This included Thomas Jefferson, who, due to his intellect and knowledge, was chosen to draft the Declaration. Then on the date of America's official birthday, July 4, 1776, a second Continental Congress met at the Pennsylvania State House, later to be known as Independence Hall, to approve Jefferson's work. That day, John Hancock signed the Declaration, whereas the other delegates, 55 of them, would sign it later, on August the 2nd, 1776. Researcher Michael Tassarian, in his Origins and Oracles series, advises that the reason for the delay between July and August has to do with astrological timing. As was stated, many of the delegates were Masons, and they knew that July was the period of the Dog Days and the rising of the Nile River in Egypt. It was also when the all-important star Sirius rises into view. This star is sacred to the goddess Isis, who is also known as Ishtar and Ishtarte, a testament to the Freemasons' affinity for the goddess. Author and researcher David Ovison, in his book The Secret Architecture of Our Nation's Capital, advises, The dog days are so called because they refer to the rising of the star Sirius. But the word dog here may be a corruption of dag, or dagon, or dragon. In this case, Sirius is dragon star, or star of the dragons, rather than of the dog. July is the month astrologically associated with cancer, which is the zodiac sign under which America was born. Cancer is known as the gate of souls and has long been associated with birth and new life. Esoterically, the number seven card of the tarot, the chariot card, signifies the zodiac sign of cancer. In esoteric traditions and in Freemasonry, the sign of Virgo, the Virgin, is vitally important for many reasons. One reason why Virgo was significant is because it was the sign that opened the Egyptian calendar. When the sun entered into the sign of Virgo, the female, the virgin, the Egyptians' new year began. One of the most important, as well as brightest stars in the heavens, is known as Spica. In the sky, or on star maps, Spica is seen above the stalk of corn or wheat held by the celestial virgin, or Virgo. Spica played a specific role for the Masons who drafted, signed, and delivered the Declaration of Independence. It is also important to note that the U.S. Constitution was also brought before the people on September 17, 1787. That is in the sign of Virgo. Located in the eye of the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol is a fresco called the Apotheosis of Washington, painted in 1865 by Constantino Brumidi. Brumidi was born and trained in Rome and had painted in the Vatican and Roman palaces before immigrating to the United States in 1852. A master of creating the illusion of three-dimensional forms and figures on flat walls, Brumidi painted frescoes and murals throughout the capital from 1855 until his death. In the book, The Secrets of Masonic Washington, author James Wasserman describes the fresco as George Washington rising to the heavens in glory, flanked by female figures representing liberty and victory and surrounded by six groups of figures 
representing the archetypes that make up a nation. Completing the triangle are 13 maidens representing the original 13 states. The number 13 is an important number to the Freemasons, the Knights Templar, and other similar groups. On the circular outer rim are the six archetypes that constitute a nation. The first one is war, represented by Columbia, or the armed forces. Next, we have science, represented by Minerva, teaching Freemasons Benjamin Franklin, Robert Fulton, and Samuel F. B. Morse. Marine is represented by Neptune, holding his trident, and Venus holding the transatlantic cable, which was being laid at the time the fresco was painted. Commerce is represented by Mercury, handing a bag of money to Freemason Robert Morris. Robert Morris was the financier of the American Revolution. Mechanics is represented by Vulcan at the anvil and forge, producing a cannon and a steam engine. Agriculture is represented by Ceres, seated on the McCormick Reaper, a type of harvesting machine, accompanied by America in a red Liberty Cap, or Phrygian Cap, and Flora, picking flowers. In the Statuary Hall of the U.S. Capitol Building is the Car of History, made by the Florentine sculptor Carlo Franzoni in 1819. The Car of History is the oldest sculpture in any government building in the United States, and it is the earliest zodiacal symbolism to be found in Washington, D.C. The statue shows a female figure said to be Cleo, muse of history, standing in a winged chariot that is being drawn spiritually. Perhaps by its own wings, or perhaps by some invisible agency which the Greeks call etheric. Cleo rests her left foot on the edge of the chariot and looks down onto the world, calmly recording in a large book what she sees. On the chariot is a carving portrait of George Washington, with an angel holding a trumpet in one hand. The chariot wheel, designed to hold the face of a clock, rests upon a zodiacal arch, with a segment of the zodiac containing the three zodiac signs of Sagittarius, Capricorn, and Aquarius. The clock acts as a dual function, as a clock face and a wheel. The wheel rests upon the image of Capricorn, which is at the zenith, or the top of the globe. David Ovison, in his book, The Secret Architecture of Our Nation's Capital, advises it may be possible that the three-sign segment of the car of history represents the terrestrial zodiac, the opposite arch of the Freemasonic Royal Arch Zodiac. The Royal Arch Zodiac's topmost zodiacal sign is Cancer. Cancer is the opposite sign of Capricorn, which is the topmost zodiacal sign seen in the segment on the car of history. Ovison proposes that this means that Franzoni's symbolism announces the passage of time, of history, is reflected not in the conscious decisions of man, those held in the full light of day, but in unconscious decisions, those welling up from the hidden unconscious. Interestingly, this interpretation is entirely in accord with the Royal Arch. The Royal Arch is topped by the Keystone of Cancer, ruled by the Moon and represents birth. On top of the arch of the car of history is Capricorn, which is ruled by the planet Saturn, the Lord of Time, and represents death. In esoteric astrology, 
These are called the great portals of birth and death. The circular face has six carvings of spokes radiating to the white wheel rim on which are depicted the twelve Roman numerals. Each of the spokes is decorated with the five-leafed floral motif associated with the zodiac sign of Virgo. Here we have the crypt of the Capitol building with the star on the floor in the center of the crypt below the rotunda. Crypt comes from the Latin word crypta, which means hidden or secret, associated with the unconscious, with the chthonic, or relating to the underworld, and with the feminine side, Virgo. This is the equivalent to linking the crypt with the shadow realm, the part of the building above, the rotunda, representing the heavens, bathed in the light of day. This lines up with the symbolism we just saw in relation between the car of history, Capricorn at the zenith, the chthonic of earth, and the celestial heavens that the Masonic rituals of the royal arch were based. Ultimately, the rotunda with the crypt below symbolizes the portals of birth, the zodiac sign of Cancer, and death, the zodiac sign of Capricorn. The star on the floor in the center of the crypt is the directional center of the street plan of Washington, D.C., the origin of the four quadrants. In the north corridors of the Capitol building, there is a fresco of the 12 zodiac signs, originally created by Constantino Brumidi. As you will recall, Brumidi was mentioned earlier as the painter of the apotheosis of Washington in the eye of the rotunda of the Capitol building. The 12 signs of the zodiac appear all over Washington, D.C., here in the Capitol building, also in the Library of Congress, the Dirksen Building, the Mellon Fountain, and in more sites in which will be covered in future videos. A testament, once again, to the astrological basis of the design and planning of Washington, D.C.